So in the last section, we talked about measures of central tendency, things like averages. In this section, we're going to be talking about measures of variation. So that's how you measure how much variability there is. Do all the workers at a company make about the same amount of money, or do some make a lot more than others? Are all the songs on a playlist about the same volume, or are some a lot louder than others? Are all the cookies in a batch of cookies about the same size, or are some a lot bigger and others a lot smaller? That's what this is all about when we talk about measures of variation. We need to somehow measure how much variability there is in a bunch of numbers or a bunch of values of some variable. So, first measure of variation that we're going to talk about is the range. And that's just the difference between the highest and lowest value. So if you had a set of test scores like this, if you look through the scores, the highest score is 96, and the lowest score is 69. So the range here would be 96 minus 69, which would be 27. In another class where the test scores were 81, 83, 86, and so on, can you see what the range would be here? And remember, if you want some time to think about it, you can pause the video. So here, the highest score is 91, and the lowest score is 35. So the range would be 91 minus 35, which is 56. So in class B, there's a lot bigger difference between the high score and the low score than there was in class A. But that doesn't really say anything about the other scores that were in between the highest and the lowest. So the range tells us something, but not a whole lot. It doesn't take into account all the numbers, just the two at the extremes. So if the range turns out to be a small number, that tells you that all the values are close together. But if the range turns out to be a big number, all you know for sure is that there's a big gap between the highest and lowest values, but that doesn't really tell you anything about what happens with all the ones in between. So a measure that's more often used to measure variability one that takes into account all the data values is the standard deviation and what's related to that, the variance. So we'll talk about variance and standard deviation together. So those are numbers that measure how spread out the data are, how much they differ from the mean and from each other. So if you have a really small standard deviation, like really close to zero, that means that all the numbers are really close together. There's not much difference between them. And if the standard deviation is a big number, then the numbers are pretty much different from each other and from the, the average. For the symbol for the standard deviation and the variance, well, we, we really have a symbol for standard deviation. And then there isn't a separate symbol for variance. We just take the symbol for standard deviation and make it squared. Because if you start out knowing the standard deviation and take that number squared, that's the variance. Or if you start out with the variance and take the square root of that, that's the standard deviation. And just like with the mean, we have two different symbols depending on whether we're working with a population or a sample. So the symbol for population standard deviation is something that looks like this. This is the Greek letter sigma, a lowercase sigma. We've already seen an uppercase sigma that means the sum of a bunch of numbers, but this is a lowercase sigma. It's like the Greek version of our letter S as in standard deviation. So sigma stands for standard deviation of a population, and sigma squared stands for the variance of a population. And then the actual letter S 
stands for a sample standard deviation, and S squared stands for a sample variance. And there is going to be a difference. These are calculated slightly differently from each other. So here's how you would go about calculating the variance and the standard deviation of a set of numbers. Here are the steps that you would go through. Step one, find the mean. Step two, for each value in your list of numbers, subtract that value minus the mean. So you're seeing how far that number is away from the mean, how much different it is from the mean. Next step, square each of these differences. Then add up the squares. And now here's the part where it matters whether we're dealing with a population or a sample. If the numbers you have represent a whole population, then you divide by how many numbers you have. If they represent a sample, you divide by one less than that. So if you had 20 numbers in your list of numbers, and those 20 numbers represented the whole population, everybody you care about, then in this step you'd be dividing by 20. If they only represented a sample that was supposed to be representative of some larger population, then you would divide by 19. And the result of doing that division is the variance. So if you stop right there, the number you have is the variance. Then to get the standard deviation, you would take the square root of that. And that gives you the standard deviation. And just like with the mean, we usually want the standard deviation rounded to one more decimal place than the original numbers. So if they were all whole numbers, you'd want to give the standard deviation to the nearest tenth, to one place after the decimal point. And the reason there's a difference between how you calculate population and sample variances and standard deviations is because if we're working with a sample, the reason we're working with a sample is so we can find out something about the population that it's drawn from, that it's supposed to relate to. But there's going to be less variation in a small sample than there will be in the larger population. If I just take a small class of students and compare how different they are from one another in their height, like the tallest student in a class of 10 and the shortest student in a class of 10, probably aren't going to be as much different from one another as the tallest and shortest students in the whole school. So, there's usually less variation in a sample than in a population, especially if the sample is relatively small. And so to correct for this, when we're calculating variance from a sample, that's why we divide by n minus 1 instead of n. To explain it in more detail than that would get into some gory mathematical details, but statisticians have studied this. They figured out that's the best way to control for the fact that Samples are smaller than populations. So here are the formulas that say in symbols what I just said in words. So this is the symbolic description of how you do those calculations to get the variance and the standard deviation. You take each number minus the mean, square that, add those up, Divide by how many there are, or that number minus 1, and then take the square root. So that's what this is telling you. The x stands for each individual number. The x bar is the mean. You're subtracting those, then squaring, then adding those up, dividing by n or n minus 1, depending on whether it's a population or a sample, and then taking the square root. So here's one example that's already worked out. And you can see on the notes that I have posted on Canvas, the worked out version. So this was class A, this set of 12 test scores. And 
In the last section, we did this as an example of calculating the mean, and we also did the median and the mode, but we said the mean was 80.6. So the first thing we have to do to find the variance and the standard deviation is we have to know what the mean is. And the next thing we have to do is take each score minus the mean. 73 minus 80.6 is negative 7.6. 94 minus 80.6 is 13.4. 81 minus 80.6 is 0 0.4, and so on. So the numbers in this column are all the numbers in this column minus 80.6. And then the next step is to take each one of these numbers in this column and square it. That is, multiply it times itself. And remember, a negative number squared is always going to come out positive. And of course, a positive number squared is positive. So that's what these numbers are. Negative 7.6 times itself is 57.76. 13.4 squared is 179.56. 0 0.4 squared is 0 0.16, and so on. Then the next thing we have to do is add all of these numbers together, add up the total of all of these number minus mean squared numbers. And they add up to 860.92. Then, if this is the whole population, if this is everybody in the class and it's not representative of some bigger group, it's just this is everybody we care about and we're working with the whole population, then to get the variance, we would take that total 860.92 and divide it by how many numbers we have in our list of numbers, which was 12. So that comes out to be 71.74, so that would be the variance. And then if we want the standard deviation, we take the square root of 71.74, and that comes out to be about 8.5. Now, on the other hand, if this represented a sample, if these 12 numbers were just a sample drawn from some larger population, then when we get to this total of 860.92, we would divide it not by 12, but by 11. There are 12 numbers here. So if n is 12, n minus 1 would be 11. And then 860.92 divided by 11 is 78.27. So that's the sample variance, and then the sample standard deviation would be the square root of that. The square root of 78.27 is about 8.8. .8. So there's not a big difference between the population and sample standard deviation. And the more numbers you have, the closer together these two things are. So it only makes a real big difference when the sample is fairly small, with not very many numbers in it. But it does make a difference. Okay, now you try one. Take this set of scores that make up class B and see if you can calculate the population standard deviation and the sample standard deviation. I'm going to end this video right now, and I will work you through the calculations in the next video, in the next part of this video series. But you might want to try doing it yourself. If you, if you think you know how this works, try doing the calculation yourself to see if you know how to do it, and then look at the next video and see if what you did matches what I do.